First of all, I feel very sad that, it, that it's had to come to this. I mean, the, the rainforest itself, the Amazonian rainforest, has been dying for some time now, but it's basically speeding up. This, this process, these fires are speeding up the kind of, what you might say, the death throes of this, this rainforest. But I also feel as though, because of public opinion beginning to change, you know, there's been a lot more interest in this, that perhaps it gives us a little bit of hope. So on the one hand, I feel terrified of seeing that this, this rainforest is eventually now really, really in danger of disappearing. But on the other hand, people are at least beginning to, it's on the news, and that's why I'm talking to you. Fine, and one of the things um, that's really hit the headlines and that's having an impact is, is when we think about the loss of the kind of lungs of our planet, if you like. But, you know, you specialise particularly in biodiversity. Why is the loss of biodiversity a big problem? Why should people also care about that? Well, of course, as you say, you know, the, the, the rainforests provide about 20% of, of the, the world's oxygen, but it's so much more than that, that the species that live, the, the connections, the networks, everything from fungi and bacteria to insects and um, other arthropods like millipedes and centipedes, the, the little things that run the world have to fit together. They're a bit like a symphony orchestra and you can't expect, it's like, taking away members of the symphony orchestra and expecting it to still be able to play Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. It's just not going to work. When we destroy elements of biodiversity, we cut the threads that bind this network together. And so at any time, any moment, this entire thing could crash. And when the nutrient cycling and the things like the leaf litter being cycled into nutrients in the soil um, is just going to start to start crashing and the ecosystem itself will begin to, to, to crash. And that's what's really dangerous when you lose biodiversity because biodiversity is nature's defense mechanism. It's nature's insurance. Plenty of species means that functions can still continue. But if you take those away, you destroy the you destroy Mother Nature's insurance mechanism. And that's what's happening now. Fine. And one of the things that you and your team are concentrating on is a kind of solution, isn't it, for looking at these areas of damage, if you like, across the world and figuring out what can be done. And I know that question of what can be done is a big one, but where, where can we start? OK, so there are two things that need to happen, because if you think about it, to, to put this into context, many people um, who are familiar with mythology and they will know about the, the famous um, occasion where the, the library in, in Athens burned down and we lost scriptures and scrolls when, when the, the massive library burnt in, you know, in, in historical times. We are essentially losing the same, it's the same thing. All this knowledge, all these millions of species are like precious books that are burning in a library. So first we have to literally put the fire out. We have to stop using hardwood furniture, stop consuming beef because the beef production is what's causing the rainforest to be cut down and the fires are starting because they're trying to burn the, the wood as they clear the rainforest. Those fires then get out of control. So the first thing to do is literally put the fires out, literally, physically and metaphorically, just put those fires out. The second thing to, to realise is that the world has already changed. So much of the rainforest has now been destroyed. We are now seeing uh, impacts on the climate. We simply cannot go back. But some people, um, there, are some, there are some good news stories. Many scientists such as ourselves are trying to restore biodiversity, even though a lot of it's been lost. And as long as we can stop the destruction, we can, we can try to reinstate some of the, the networks that I was talking about. So what my group, myself and my postdoc, Josie Phillips, what we do is we work in Southeast Asia and we use plants called epiphytes. These are plants that grow in the rainforest and they're very useful. You can move them around. And that's our little way of restoring some of this complexity of trying to give nature back its insurance policy. But we could do that anywhere in the world. You could do this in the Amazon. You could do this in Australia, in Africa, in Southeast Asia. The point is we need to restore the biodiversity as well as we can. We cannot put the rainforest back. The rainforest took hundreds of millions of years to evolve. It's too late. What, that's why this is a tragedy. Once it has burnt, it is gone, and it is gone forever. The best that we could ever hope for is to try to salvage what is left, and we have to do that with action. We can't just pray for the rainforest. We need to actually do things like consume less beef, not buy such um, extravagant furniture, and just try to pay attention to the Rainforest Alliance, to NGOs that are trying to, to work in favour of the rainforest. Farnan and Elwood there joining me um, on Skype from Bristol. Farnan, thank you very much for joining us.
You're welcome. Thank you.